It is now a name none of us will ever forget, Irma. This is starting on Saturday out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Low pressure could dive down to the south and then continue to move, roll towards the United States. It will probably go category three, four, maybe even five between now and Tuesday. On September 10th in 2017, Hurricane Irma barreled over Fort Myers, which is where we're standing right now at the turtle source. There was about two foot of standing water and some trees that were 60 to 80 feet went down on the property. As you can imagine, it's been a lot of work to get things going again. But luckily, with hard work and a few friends, Mark's been able to get things rolling and we're gonna see what's happened and uh, what's new on this side of the turtle source. Our animal mission is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. Oh, Mark, I do not envy you at all, man. Uh, you know, I'm on two and a half acres, but in many ways, it's easier for me because things aren't so compact. So when you have a tree like this, how big was this tree? This tree was almost 80 feet tall. There you go, guys, 80 feet tall. It's the last stump and we're how many months since the hurricane that they got to dig out. There's probably about 40 hours of digging uh, to get this stump out of the ground, which he has to do to make sure the fences are secure and so on. But my gosh, Mark, how have you been handling it, buddy? Well, it, it's basically every every time you have any time at all, you put into it. If you look over here, these cages, oh, the, yeah. the, the, the trees, that were, the stumps that we were already taken out came up underneath and destroyed these. So we had to, these are all custom fits. So what we ended up doing was we sheared off the tops of these bins and set the tops into, into brand, brand new, new bins. And so that that's fun. crazy. So this is just the remnant of just the, the top, old tub the top because you're inches. never getting these things back into the lip again, exactly. are you? Exactly. Oh my gosh. Yeah, just little things like that. It drives me crazy. I just, you know, guys, you are great. Uh, my, the, the folks uh, that are watching the channel, man, they've been so great to me and worried about how my animals were doing. But guys, there were so many people with animals and businesses that revolve around animals. I look at this and just the intricacy of what he's done here, and I almost hyperventilate thinking about a hurricane coming, to be perfectly honest. And it's, you know what was great scary. too was friends came over. Everybody yeah. was ready to have it happen to them, and it didn't happen to them. They just drove to this side of the state. We had Chris from Sea Serpents with his people wow. come over here, and everybody put a day, half yeah. a day, whatever they had, and helped out. We even had the Mormon church bugging me for a couple weeks. No way. And they actually put, tell them That's a story, a man. That's story. a pretty incredible story. Yeah. Check, this, check this out, guys. They, they kept bugging me and said, we want to help, we want to help. And I'm like, why do you want to help? Well, we just want to help. I said, okay. So they came out with a couple guys and me, and we all, three of us had chainsaws. And about 23, 24 kids from 12 years old to about 21 years old pulled everything we cut to the curb for, for an hour and a half, and they did about a week's work. In, in an hour and a half. And I said, can I write the, ch the ch church a check? No. Can I get you some new chainsaw? No. Get, no. Nothing. Can we just sing a song and say a prayer? And I said, that's fantastic, guys. I can't thank you enough. That's amazing. Can't, can't that's thank you enough. Cool. Well, because you yeah. got to imagine, guys, that tree came. It was, was this whole area just inundated uh, with It was leaves. one of a dozen trees. trees. This, this, was, oh just a, this was just a jungle. You couldn't see anything here at all. Everything was just trees. And you had to cut for hours of the chainsaw just to be able to walk through. And so all the turtles and tortoises, now, now add into that, guys, that there was two foot of water standing. Yeah. So they're doing all this work in water. All these pens inundated with water. He pulled out most of the animals. I mean, you don't want water to come around with water turtles. They'll just swim yeah, away, you know? Have, we have a disaster plan. We took almost every single animal inside the house. Oh and every tree that fell on the fence line also broke a water line and usually an electric line and try to find your water line break inside of two feet of standing water you, you can't not only that there's no power so let's put this into perspective it's probably about 90 degrees in september down here in south florida we're on the opposite side of the state in fort myers 90 degrees thousands of turtles in your house smelling really bad you're smelling bad there's no ac or electricity wow sounds like a great time freaking out oh dude well, yeah. 
You had to turn the water on quick to take a shower because half of it went into the yard in the broken pipes. Oh my God. And, and you know, after we cut trees all day, I'd come in late at night and change the baby water turtles uh, water for hours and then take a shower and then turn the water back off. My gosh, and you could just see like, that's what I love coming here. Look, little, little Hillary. Yeah, the Argentine side. Like, we got like Japonica. Look at this beautiful Japanese pond turtle right there. Moremi's Japonica. So cool. There's some black woods in there. The, yeah. the Argentine side, they're, they're like little dogs. Oh, I love them. I got three in my big pond and they come right up. And yeah. my gosh, I do love them. Uh, it's so awesome. So how cool is this? We can talk about hurricane disasters, but we still get to talk about amazing animals. Now listen, we're heading on over to the Hamiltoni Pond. And uh, I guess you guys have some eggs out of these or what? Yeah, this morning there's a clutch of eggs. Our girl Cheyenne alerted me and said, we've got some eggs if you'd like to see some in the nest before we dig them up. And these are Geoclumbus hamiltoni. That's the Indian spotted pond turtle. Love these. And this is uh, another one of those endangered species, but they're almost extinct in the wild. And we produce them. A lot of other Florida people produce them real well. And this morning we've got a clutch. And if you look at that whole area, because of the storm, we had to replace the lay area. And it costs a couple thousand dollars and a lot of hours of work to rebuild that lay area. My it's, gosh, let's it's have working a look. really well now. Come on over here, guys. Take a look at these. These are beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful turtles. They do very well here in Florida. They can take real cool water. Um, you know, they do get a lot of the wash from the Himalayas floods into their river system. So it's cool water. Big turtle. What do we got? Look at that. Look at this right here, man. Uh, I would love to get a few of these to oh, raise up, man. Oh, yeah. Here goes the slide, everybody. Right in. It's like a turtle amusement park. Uh, this is sick. So, you know, I like what you've done with space. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's very uh, functional. You know what I mean? Everything has to function. How many years have you been in this facility at your home? Uh, bought this house in 1992. Shh, we, we, we unpacked the first weekend. The second weekend, I rented a concrete saw and I cut the window down and made a sliding glass door and we've been going out ever since. Yeah, you're never inside, yeah. man. I know the feeling, guys. I'm outside all the time, too. So where's this nest? Let's show well, let's, these let's folks. Let's take a look over here. Some nests. Slide around this way. Okay. Let me, let me, let me you see the space with you here. And, and what we built is this. This will cover the, the rainwater coming off the roof. Okay. Do you want me to and remove this? Prob yeah, probably if, if you can come from that angle, you'll see it really well. All right, cool. Watch your head there, Tom. Tom's always yeah, getting Yeah, those bombed. you can leave up. Oh, I can leave these up? Yeah. All right. Ooh, it's bright. Yeah. Ooh, that's bright light. And here, put that on the window sill. Yeah, no worries. So the way we built this... And that's to help keep it cool underneath? It reflects well, it keeps the, light the rain off. It's keep the rain off. Okay. So you can tell something was happening here. You can see the flat. That's from a turtle shell. And these are here to keep them from walking away. And we custom fit, fit this, and it works out really well. This is, again, that Kluber Tans vinyl coated wire. And, you know, just looking, I would say probably in here, but I'm just going to take off the, the top area here. There we go. And you can see already an egg. And I, oh, wow. And, and, you know, this morning, Cheyenne, our, our, our lead person outside, spotted the mound, and she was exactly right. Cool. That this is, is awesome. This is this is the fourth clutch since the new top went on, and everybody was looking at us like we're going to lay soon. You better you better get something going on. And sure enough, we raised to do it, and it's been worth it because. Do these have a leathery or porcelain shell? These these are hard. Okay, so they have like a hard shell. A lot of freshwater turtles guys are going to have a leathery shell, but you will find species like snapping turtles, soft shell turtles. They tend to have a porcelain uh, shell, similar to a tortoise shell. Mo all tortoises have a porcelain shell. Or a hard shell. And, and a lot with the Asian species, too. Almost all the Asian species have this the, is the hard shell. quite a clutch, man. Yeah. Well, what kind of good. hatch rates do you get out of this species? These are actually really good. These these are these are in the 80 to 90% range, no problem. Sometimes we get 100%. What a shame that in the wild, these animals are not thriving. And yet, in captivity here, we, we're probably producing more now. Um, we're coming up on producing more of these. Uh, then, then are actually going to be uh, available in the wild. Well, it's to the point now where, the, where the, the one who breeds the most of these is the National Reptile Breeders Expo director, Wayne Hill, and he's actually offered to send thousands back to India wow. to repopulate what's in the wild because they're not in the wild anymore. I mean, there's a few here and there, but that's just one clutch, and, and that's a beautiful thing. When we can return stuff to nature where it's extinct in nature. It's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. We yeah. just got to get the protection in place so that they just don't get farmed out again. 
Yeah. I love it, man. This is really great. We're going to pull these out. We're going to get them in the incubator. I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the trials and tribulations, uh, but end on a happy note because with all the drama of the hurricane, Mark is still producing turtles here at the Turtle Source. Go visit him at turtlesource.com. Tell him Kenan sent you. And then uh, if you're looking for an aquatic species, definitely talk to him. He's got a lot to offer. And for me, if you don't mind hitting the like button and also subscribing to the channel if you like learning about reptiles, turtles in particular, and go on over to the Camp Ken and Army channel. Hit subscribe there as well. And as always, appreciate your help on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Camp Kenan. I'm out of here. Oh, and if you want a t-shirt, that helps too. And you can even buy one of his. We'll talk to you guys soon, man. Thanks so much, buddy. Thanks, Ken. All right, bro. Let me get something. Yeah, let's get it. Out of here.